Competition and Markets Authority has announced it will look at the proposed deal. So there may be more on that. Now, here's a fact I, I reckon some of you wouldn't know. Apparently, snail slime works wonders for the skin. Not for mine, but apparently it will. The Italian snail farming industry has trebled in 20 years. It's now worth £180 million. They say it's mainly being driven by demand from the cosmetics industry. Well, the farmers have even developed a way to remove the slime without harming the snails. I'm sure you'll be glad to know. They steam them. But we discovered that our reporter Danny Mitzman in Italy already knew all about this. This is my bathroom. And inside my bathroom cabinet there is a bottle of cough mixture for my three-year-old daughter. And the ingredients list says that it does contain extract of snail. And as you can hear, it's nearly finished. Disgusting as it sounds, she doesn't seem to mind at all, but I haven't actually told her that it's got snail slime in it. And this is my local pharmacy where I bought my daughter's cough syrup. Martina's one of the pharmacists who works here. Eh, dal 2013 eh, le vendite sono aumentate. Martina says they've been selling a lot more snail slime products since 2013. Eh, si sì, sono aumentate perché all'inizio comunque l'idea di assumere soprattutto sciroppi a base di bava di lumaca lasciava un po' di perplessità e così di disgusto, diciamo. A lot of people when they heard that there was snail slime in a cough syrup, they were kind of disgusted by it and a bit perplexed. But ma grazie all'informazione sia diffusa sia sulla validità che sull'efficacia tutto ciò ora è ampiamente superato e anzi la richiesta appunto è aumentata spontaneamente senza neanche più far conoscere il prodotto. At first they would give information but people have noticed that it works and so Martina says people actually now come in and ask for the syrup they don't even have to promote it. Italy does seem to be experiencing a snail slime boom in cough syrups but especially in skin products. All my friends, female and male, seem to know about it, and one swears by it for stretch marks, all of which means snails are big business. Italians have been eating wild snails forever, but they only began farming them 45 years ago. The little town of Cerasco in the northwestern region of Piedmont is home to the International Snail Breeders Institute. A snail breeder with 21 years of experience, there's nobody more passionate about snail slime than the Institute's president, Simone Sampo. For over 20 years they've been making products with snail slime, but in the last six months there's been an increase of more than 40%. In Italy there's a saying, if you eat a live snail, you'll get rid of your ulcer. Obviously, it's an old wives' tale, but it does have a real scientific basis. Although, of course, if you did do it, you get rid of your ulcer and give yourself salmonella instead. The ancient Greeks and Romans apparently used snail slime on their skin, while Sara Borio, who works at the Institute, tells me they discovered its benefits by chance in the 1980s. People who work in the snail farm realize that always had good hands, always hydrated, moisturized, and that they heal quickly. Convinced of snail slime's miracle healing properties, Simone is thrilled with the boom in interest from both the pharmaceutical and cosmetic sectors. With the raw material in hot demand, he's been focusing his energies on the best possible way to extract it. My idea was to prevent the snails from suffering and to create a machine that would avoid contamination of the slime and allow extraction from the same snails more than once. After nine years of study, we've managed to make that machine. Sarah's talking me through my first and probably last ever snail slime extraction. The machine is composed by two domes where inside there are uh, containers which contains uh, 20 kilos of snails. How many snails is 20 kilos? 20 kilos, um, 1,600 snails, more or less. The snail produces slime for three reasons. To move, for pleasure, or when they suffer, so when they die. With this machine, as you can see, they feel pleasure because after the extraction, they don't die. With the other methods that use salt and vinegar, the snails died. Is it warm in there? No, it's 
as you can see, it's like a room temperature. It's uh, like a fresh shower. It's like a, a spa for uh, for snails. The entire cycle lasts uh, one hour. That slime in that plastic container, does it smell? Mm, it has a natural smell. If you want to, we can... Uh, you can yeah, I'd like to have a sniff. <laughs> we can sniff. <laughs> It smells very pleasant, a bit yeah. earthy, a bit um, grassy. Natural. Yes, it's very, very pleasant, I think. Uh, yeah, it's herby. Yeah. I didn't expect it to smell nice. <laughs> yeah. We have eight uh, snail farmers in Carrasco, and uh, we go to visit uh, one now. There are about 4,000 snail farmers in the breeders' network, all of whom follow the Institute's philosophy of natural outdoor breeding. No animal feed and no greenhouses. The better quality the snail, says Simone, the better quality its slime will be. Monica Fissore's farm is called Il Giardino della Lumaca, the snail's garden. It's extremely muddy. But it was going to snow, and it's not snowing. How long have you been farming snails? Da quanto tempo? Da quattro anni, from four years. And how many snails? There are uh, one million snails. We mm, do the snails only vegetable. Uh, especially uh, sunflowers, because the snail like much sunflowers. Sunflowers, carrots and uh, cabbage. The food is very important, it's most important. Until now, Monica's only sold her snails for eating, but she's going to start selling for extraction too. Simone says the boom in snail slime cosmetics and pharmaceuticals is creating a consequent explosion in snail farming. Every week, every Saturday, I make the lesson for, uh, for the people that want to breed the snail. The lesson is free. 80 person from all the world. Lebanon, There's even Georgia, a snail farm South opening Africa, in Ireland, although no Ireland, potential ones in the UK yet. Is there a market in the UK? Have you had interest from the UK? We had interest. Uh, I think it's a really potential market uh, because we have interest in people calling us, uh, mailing us, uh, asking about uh, the, um, the Singapore products. Uh, do you mean retailers or do you mean cosmetic uh, no, companies? No, like uh, consumers. So in spite of the ooh factor, you think it could it could work in the UK? I, I think uh, with the good information, uh, it could work. Sarah Borio ending that report from Danny Mitzman. And there are pictures, or there will be very soon, of the uh, snail spa on our website. Now, back to hard reality. We all know that local authority and council budgets being squeezed at the moment, but where are the pinch points and what are the knock-on effects? 